We're here today with Larry Diamond for another segment of Democracy Ideas at the International Forum for Democratic Studies. Larry, thanks very much for joining us. For a variety of reasons, democracy has come under a good deal of criticism in the recent past, but no real alternative has emerged to democracy. What do you think the biggest challenge today is to, to democracy and its further development? I think the question has to be rephrased. Alternatives for what? Toward what end? A lot of people say, well, look at China, look at India. And this is an old refrain and an old comparison. It's not a new one. China has developed more rapidly. And a lot of people say, well, more generally, look at some of the stunning success stories of development in previous eras, Taiwan, Korea, Singapore, now Malaysia. Uh, maybe developmental authoritarianism is the answer. And I think the response to that uh, has several elements. One is that the experience of the East Asian authoritarian states does not seem easily replicable elsewhere in the world. I think there were some distinctive elements of time, place, culture, and so on that contributed to that. The second response is no one has been able to offer a convincing explanation that if Korea and Taiwan had had uh, democratic rule in the 60s and 70s, let's say, they would not have achieved the impressive rates of, e or reasonably impressive e rates of economic growth. Then we have to weigh the sacrifices in terms of human freedom, societal stability, accountability, control of corruption, uh, that suffered, particularly in terms of human rights, and human dignity by having these very hard and repressive authoritarian regimes. It needs to be noted, Chris, that uh, Korea and Taiwan have done pretty well since the transitions to democracy in terms of economic growth. And indeed, Korea has had for some of this period rates of economic growth that were better than under uh, <clears throat> significant parts of the late authoritarian period of military rule. Moreover, we see that a lot of the uh, emerging democracies of the G20 have also been doing pretty well uh, for periods of time, at least Turkey, Brazil, and so on. So there's nothing intrinsic to authoritarian rule that makes them better able to deliver economic growth. There's much more variation in the performance of authoritarian regimes with respect to the economy uh, than in the performance of democratic regimes. So you may get more spectacular success stories of extremely rapid growth under authoritarian rule, but you also get more developmental disasters like Burma for a long period of time, uh, and now Zimbabwe, the Democratic Republic of Congo, the former Zaire, etc. The world's failed states are almost exclusively authoritarian states. And it's only when states um, descend into uh, arbitrary rule, the absence of the rule of law, uh, predatory rule, really, and therefore the absence of democracy, that they kind of slip down a glide path to possible state failure. I also think that if you think about the future of India and China and ask, what will the constitutional system of these countries be 15 years from now? Few people doubt that India will have the same constitutional system 15 or 30 years from now uh, that it has now. India will be a federal democracy. Uh, I think many people doubt that China will have the same system, and maybe we could talk about that. If authoritarian regimes face the existential question that... Um, they cannot legitimate themselves by the intrinsic nature of their rule, that they're only legitimate to the extent that they perform and as long as they perform in delivering economic growth. And what happens when they stop performing? Then you've got one whopping legitimacy crisis and the potential of a national political crisis if there's not a planned transition. So in terms of human rights, rule of law, human dignity, um, immunity from famines, which Amartya Sen has shown democracies um, never do have famines. That's a unique property of authoritarian regimes. 
and long-run political stability in terms of being able to manage and absorb political change better, I think there are all sorts of reasons to embrace democracies as the better political system. There's one other point I'd like to make about democracies, and that is if they go wrong, if they perform badly, if they get a run of corrupt political leadership, there's one overriding institutional advantage that democracies have over authoritarian regimes, and that is the possibility for self-correction. People can replace their bad leaders, uh, their decadent, corrupt ruling parties, uh, and set themselves on a better path. And with authoritarian regimes, the only way you can do that is by, you know, organizing massive civil resistance or taking to the streets or... Uh, turning toward violent revolution and a lot of other things that we wouldn't want to see. So uh, democracies have, I'd say, diverse, far-reaching institutional advantages over authoritarian regimes that make them far preferable, even in utilitarian terms, not just in normative terms.